So welcome to this London Property Alliance briefing on our latest Global City Survey. This is our third survey, uh, the second one of this year, that's put together in cooperation with our friends at Centre for London, who done the data and analysis. Um, the purpose of the survey is really to try and track and understand how London is performing internationally against some of its great rival cities, rather than um, focusing just on what's going on in the UK and how London is faring against other cities uh, closer to home. The cities included in the survey are London, of course, alongside New York, Hong Kong, Paris and Berlin. And whilst we don't have indicators for all of these cities, we have them for many on one of 19 measures that we are tracking, uh, uh, tracking across a whole re range of um, topics from transport to the economy, housing, crime, and air quality, restaurant bookings, and so forth. So in the next few minutes, I just want to take you through some of the uh, more noticeable, uh, noteworthy indicators that we've been looking at but the full report and all the indicators will be available uh, for you to look at on our website very shortly. So in terms of headlines, the report really paints quite a positive picture for London, and it's seeing that our recovery post COVID is well underway now. And in many cases, we are seeing London starting to overtake some of the competitive cities that I've mentioned uh, as um, we enter the sort of the second part of 2022. Uh, particularly with respect to um, the economy and employment, there's been some very positive news uh, on that front. We've seen uh, unemployment fall to uh, its lowest level since uh, the pandemic uh, started uh, and it's now running at around four percent just over four percent for uh, for london and that's the lowest in our sample of cities meanwhile new york is still way ahead on uh, around nine percent which is um, clearly a cause of concern for them but they are also seeing improvement they're down on uh, about 18%, which is where they were in Q2 2020. And the other cities, uh, Paris, Berlin, and Hong Kong, are somewhere in between uh, New York and London, with Hong Kong also performing quite strongly, very close to the London figure of 4% 4, 4 or so that I, I mentioned earlier. Now, that's also uh, that, that sort of positive news, as you would perhaps expect, is reflected in employment statistics. And on that front, London's uh, employment uh, compared to pre COVID is now um, at its highest level at around a uh, hundred and four percent of the uh, 20, 2019 level. That's the equivalent quarter in 2019. So we're talking about, in this case, Q1 2022 compared to Q1 2019. And it's outstripping all the other cities in our sample in terms of uh, that, that performance against benchmark. Uh, and again, uh, New York is struggling with an employment level of around 90 odd percent. So still well down on uh, its pre-COVID levels. And uh, Paris, Ile de France, New, uh, Hong Kong um, are, are again somewhere sort of in between, in between the two. And finally, we're turning to the third element of the labour market, which is looking at job vacancies. Uh, we track uh, the number of job postings that uh, are put up on Indeed, which is a leading uh, website for employment. And we've seen that in London, numbers have now started to plateau, uh, perhaps as inflation and recession fears start to have an impact on employer sentiment and therefore on recruitment. But, but postings still remain much higher than they did before the pandemic. Uh, both Paris and Berlin have seen uh, uninterrupted growth in vacancy levels. 
And um, uh, based on our analysis of this data, uh, both New York and Berlin are neck and neck in terms of having the highest, uh, highest levels of vacancies out of our city sample. So that's just a quick overview of where we are on jobs, um, unemployment, and indeed employment. So I want now to turn to um, one of the survey measures, which is very close to uh, the London Property Alliance's members' hearts, which is, of course, the real estate market. And what we're seeing here um, is, again, evidence of quite strong recovery. So in the case of change in prime office rents, we're seeing that since the end of last year, um, there's been a significant growth in prime office rents in London's West End market, with a growth showing in excess of 10% compared to uh, a year and year. So that's Q1 22 compared to Q, Q1 uh, 2021. Um, and this follows steep declines in 2020 and indeed a sort of plateauing off in Q3 2021. Um, we think that uh, the reopening of the economy, the return of commuters and visitors to central London is having a very positive effect on, on the West End and sentiment. And um, a number of major landlords, including Shaftesbury, have announced that um, they're seeing a return to profitability as footfall in their area. They're a big player in the West End market has increased um, markedly. Um, now, prime rents in the city, uh, so the Square Mile, the financial district for London, are also uh, up um, uh, significantly. They're up by around 8% um, in Q1 2022 compared to Q1 2021. Um, and again, we think that this is reflecting market sentiment as employers come to terms with the changes in working practices and labour market um, shifts. They're starting to think through now what their real estate strategies are going to be. And indeed, um, for a range of reasons, reasons to do with employer requirements, to do with a desire to have high, high performance office space from an environmental point of view. And indeed, um, in order to secure a sort of strategic, long lasting position in the city, um, we believe those are the factors, some of the factors which are uh, influencing sentiment and therefore price in the square mile market. Um, Berlin is also experiencing a significant rise in rents for prime office stock. Um, which is very similar in terms of that growth figure I mentioned compared to uh, the city. So that's some thoughts on what's going on with prime office rents. Turning to vacancy rates, uh, the big story here is that New York's uh, uh, Manhattan office vacancy rate, Manhattan is the largest uh, borough out of the five boroughs of New York City and the one which is most comparable to central London in many ways. Uh, so Manhattan is seeing uh, very uh, an extended run of vacancy, uh, double digit, nearly 20% now, around 20% uh, vacancy rates. Um, in fact, it's just hit 21%. Um, and indeed, both their job numbers and commuting numbers remain below those in many other global cities. Um, empty offices are actually becoming also for New York a serious concern um, for the state's finances, the city's finances as well, because property taxes make up around 40 uh, odd percent of um, the tax base of the city. Um, so you can see why this is an area uh, of of, of great focus and concern for city authorities. Different, uh, different setup in, in London where the majority of property taxes are centralised, they're sent to central government and then redistributed across local authorities in London and elsewhere uh, as part of a, a national scheme for business rates. And central London office vacancy rates are, um, are hovering between 6 and 8% at the moment. Um, 
and uh, which is a slight uptick on numbers in uh, the last quarter of last year. Um, but this does follow a period of decrease which took place in the second half of 2021. Um, so within the central London market, uh, there are big differences in office vacancy rates. Uh, they're around 4.5% in West End, and, but much higher at 10.6% in the city. Having said that, grade A office space demand in the city remains very strong and uh, with a vacancy rate of just 2.9%, um, it's actually stronger. Uh, the market for grade A is actually stronger in the city than it is in uh, certain central, other central London areas, according to a uh, BNP Bariba analysis. Uh, and then finally, just turning to Hong Kong, Hong Kong's office vacancy uh, rates also uh, remained high, although they're around a half of uh, Manhattan's. So the, their number is, number for Hong Kong is hovering around uh, 10% or so. Um, and we think that this may well reflect hesitancy on the part of employers who, with the very harsh lockdown uh, situation there, are um, going to be hesitant to, uh, to take on additional space, um, given the uncertainties and pressures that that market is, is under. And finally, in contrast, um, both Berlin and Paris um, which have always been at the lower end of vacancy rates f uh, throughout the period we've been we've been monitoring it. So going back from the beginning of 2020, their rates were lower then and continue to be with um, vacancy rates of around three percent in both cities. Okay, I'd like to talk now a little bit about workplace uh, mobility measures. So this is Google's indicator, which we take to be. Uh, so a proxy for how busy workplaces are. Um, Hong Kong um, has, has seen re remarkably high working rates for most of the pandemic, although earlier this year, these slumped to as low as 49% of uh, below 2019 levels when all civil servants were mandated to work from home and private employers were encouraged to make the same choice. Um, so workplace uh, visits for the territory have since recovered, um, peaking at, 20, at 96% of 2019 levels, but um, they still remain uh, significantly below uh, their December 21 um, um, uh, level. Um, now, Manhattan, which is obviously, as I mentioned before, the big the central business district of New York City uh, continues to see a, a lower level of workplace visits than for New York City as a whole. And that reflects its job, uh, job composition with, it, with its dominant sectors being in financial and technology sectors. Um, and that means more of those jobs can be done remotely and that reflects the lower, the lower figure. Um, so Manhattan is at the moment operating um, over 30% uh, over below its benchmark. So its, its levels of workplace related mobility are over around a third lower than the pre-COVID level. Uh, whilst for New York City as a whole, they're much closer to London's figure at around 25 to 26%. Now, notwithstanding some uh, press stories in the British press, London office working rates uh, are actually uh, somewhat better than for, 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 for New York. Um, and they're much more comparable to New York. And um, having said that, they do remain below uh, the comparable figures for Paris and Berlin. Uh, and as we've mentioned for, for Hong Kong too. There's been quite a big improvement in workplace mobility uh, for London specifically. And that trend, we believe, looks set to continue. And then finally, I just wanted to talk about uh, airport passenger demand. Um, obviously, during the pandemic, 
airport saw a virtual collapse in the number of passengers due to government restrictions. So by April 2020, um, uh, all the airports in, uh, covered in our sample for our cities were basically uh, flatlining uh, very, very close to zero percent of their 2019 levels. But since then, we've seen, uh, with the exception of Hong Kong, quite a dramatic recovery in New York City's airports, uh, which includes um, Newark in across the, the state boundary in uh, in New Jersey, but so New York's uh, airport system has seen very significant uh, recovery. Um, likewise for Paris and London, and indeed for Berlin. New York is now running at around 90% of its pre-COVID levels in passenger numbers, and London and Berlin are above 70%. It wasn't that long ago, just in January of this year, year that London was operating at around just under 40% of uh, its equivalent month's levels uh, in 2019. And then bringing up uh, the rear in Europe is Berlin, which has now recovered to just over 40 odd percent of its, uh, its pre-COVID levels. So actually a very positive and strong story to uh, end on in the context of looking at transport and air passenger demand, with the London airports really showing very strong recovery. And although that's produced a number of uh, headline stories around problems to do with delays and baggage systems and so forth, um, on the basis that airports and government get to grips with that, those problems, we think that there's a very positive outlook for uh, seeing aviation demand recover further as we go into the summer season and indeed uh, the latter half of 2022. So uh, to summarize, um, I think it's true to say that the findings of the latest London Property Alliance Global City Survey are really encouraging. Uh, they demonstrate London's uh, strong economic re performance and indeed recovery when compared to some of our competitors, despite the fact that there are signs that the UK economy may well be slowing down. Um, I think the other thing we can say is that post-pandemic trends relating to travel and working and shopping uh, are kind of uh, clearly a feature now of daily life in the cities that we're looking at. Um, but it's also important to make sure, I think, that we, we don't let disruption to airports, railways, uh, Transport for London services um, derail or undermine what are clearly some very strong green shoots of recovery. I hope you I hope you enjoyed uh, listening to a few of the headlines from our survey, um, and um, you'll be able to read, as I mentioned earlier, the whole document online. And we look forward to bringing you the fourth survey, uh, so the third one for this year. Uh, um, in the early to mid-autumn. Thank you very much.